Now, the rest of the story. Well, welcome back to the rest of the story. This is the last row on the corn planter of me changing out the seed discs and the gauge wheel arms. And I'm just going to talk you through it as, as I do it. I could do this uninterrupted and just at 23 minutes, which is how long the video was, I sped it up by like 1.5 times just to get it right around 15 minutes uh, because I do have a couple spots here where I had to go through and you know what, you're about to see it, so let's just let's go right through. Um, first thing I do, which things you learn after you've done this 11 times now, um, I went through and loosened up the gauge wheels, the bolts that hold the gauge wheels onto the arms first. I'm only using a, a breaker bar, strong arm, whatever you want to call it. Depends on who you are and where you are. Um, different mechanics have different names for seems everything. Um, but I had enough leverage using this this bar. I could go through and, and loosen them. Otherwise, I'd use the air impact. And somebody just asked me the other day if we had these seed disc scrapers on our seed discs. And we've always ran those. Um, clear back to our six-row planter that my grandpa had. Um, to that six-row vacuum POS. But really quickly here you can see I already took the dust caps off on the far side you're noticing maybe you can't but the bolt that holds the seed disc on the left side if you're sitting behind the planter as I am is actually reverse thread so I had to you know pull down on or push down on the bar on both of those to get them loose um, it's so the seed disc opener doesn't loosen itself as you're going across the field I don't know if I've done I've actually shown it in a video. I guess I never I took a, a picture to show the representation of um, how worn those seed discs are. But the actual the bevel the, the the edge of the old openers was gone. Um, they were they were right at what 14 inches was a pretty good um, estimate as to far as how short they were or how worn they were. Um, I think my parts guy friends said they had to be down what 14 to 14 and a half and we were at 14 across and pretty much all of them so they were well within the the replacement zone should we say and this is the part that I want you guys to see um, there's spacers um, that go behind that's what I'm doing right now um, I'm going through and putting the spacers checking the fertilizer tube because it is kind of a pain to deal with with all the the wheels and the seed discs on. Um, when I actually that arm that you saw me dealing with that fertilizer tube, we had to go through and put those on two or three years ago. Um, so I went through back when the seed discs had a little bit more life to them, obviously, and I've already done this before. But what I'm doing is there is a specification for the gap that you're supposed to have on the contact area of these seed discs and you're gonna see me check it and decide that actually this is the first one out of all of these that it was too much it was three inches instead of like an inch um, so I had to go through and move some spacers put some spacers on the inside to um, widen the or shorten the gap I'm sorry uh, because the specification for the area that this can touch is an inch and a half to two and a half inches. And I was aiming for, well, I've, two and a half was plenty fine. Um, I was going for at least two inches. So if it was an inch and a half, um, I, would, I would adjust it. So what you do is those two pieces of paper, you put them in. I'm actually being a lot more gentle with it than what it seems like. The video is sped up. But you go through and you're putting those pieces of papers in and as you're sliding them in, the, as soon as they start to to catch, to make contact where they'll sit in there by themselves is when you, you let them go. You don't force them at all. Um, and what you do is you measure the gap. It tells you the contact area that you have. And I was aiming for two and a half generally because it gives you the, the wear. I mean, as it wears down, that gap is going to get smaller. And... 
I'm hoping these seed discs last us for at least a few years. Um, I mean, depends on the amount of acres we're dragging this planter over, uh, which is, seems like it's a constantly moving number, which is awfully frustrating at times. So, um, not to talk about take away from the planter, but I did actually lock in the last of the rest of my hay ground that I'll be running pretty much. So, a little, a little like 130 some acres of hay I'll be running for at least the next few years. So. As you can see, the gap wasn't right, so I'm putting more spacers behind the disc, and you have to watch the cast, the arm, uh, up above. Um, if you you don't have enough spacers, um, it'll actually rub on the actual row unit itself, so you're trying to watch for that, because somebody's probably going to ask what side, what, how do you decide which side to put spacers in? Uh, generally, um, I was putting three spacers behind each blade as a rule of thumb and I was adding or taking away from there um, never had any that had less than three um, but I did have up to six on one row and if I only had to put one spacer in I generally looked at the width the distance from the, the cast arm um, from behind the seed disc largely because I didn't want I don't want the seed disc rubbing and catching and wearing so there's a lot that you're watching out for when you're doing these. Um, I'm going to go through, make sure you tighten everything up. I mean, I think you catch me a couple times where I go through and, and check just to make sure that it is tight. So yeah, shaking the row unit. Because generally it's loose or, you know, rotating freely. Then pieces of paper, because it's the 12th row, they're kind of turned over and that gap well, <clears throat> looks like it's pretty close I got the camera set up waiting to see what I do here I can't remember I just did this yesterday but you think I could remember uh oh well dang it third time's a charm I think this is one where I do only put one spacer on the side Yep. Yeah, so there you go. It wasn't just right, so I'd need just a little bit more of a of a gap, so or less of a gap. So there you go. Um really refrain from using the impact or anything else like that because largely if you can't get this tight enough by hand, uh you're gonna start damaging stuff if you start using the impact because you start breaking the studs off or be kind of catastrophic if you actually mess up the threads and some of this stuff so I'm actually glad this part is done because now I'm doing the roller chains I don't know if I'm gonna have a chance to do it today <coughs> excuse me but we're gonna be going through uh, Ryan already did a bunch of the roller chains on the drive unit uh, well until he ran out of chain but that isn't an issue anymore so now I'm gonna be going through all the row units um, the roller chains Grease the planter, put the uh, soybean cups, and you see I got the dust cap back on. Uh, put the bean cups back on the, on the seed rows. Um, put my seed box extensions on. Um, the insecticide boxes aren't going to go back on. I already made that decision. Uh, seed scraper. You see I'm trying to use a screwdriver to at least get this on the rest of the way, like on every row. I managed to do all 12 of these rows without cutting myself because these blades are are plenty sharp if you hit them with any amount of force you're you're going to do some damage to your hand so using the screwdriver and there you go and then that way it it's knocking off any of the the dirt in this area off as it's coming back up around on the seed disc opener um, really important on the muddy years um, what was it three or four years ago when we were planting in mud, you know, basically you hated yourself every morning that you got into the planter because we never did have any dry conditions to plant our crops. Um, yeah, the, the, the dirt, the mud, I don't want it wasn't exactly, it wasn't, it was like one notch below actual mud, but the, the dirt buildup was, was ugly. And, oh, the Schlegel opening wheels. I, for those of you that are new to the channel, we did go through and we put the Schlegel wheels, those closing wheels on the back by my knees there, on 
on the planner. I'm really looking forward to running those. Um, here's the gauge arm. I want you guys to see what I'm doing. I'm putting the the wear piece, which the piece that I'm putting in on the old arm, which is a different design, uh, is what wore, and that is why I'm having to go through and change all these out. Um, it's a different design. There's more of a wear area, so it doesn't ride. As it doesn't ride on the thread anymore. It's actually got a, a surface that it can sit on, um, so at least we'll have many seasons of, of use out of it. Here, using my my foot to get the the cage wheel up where I need it to be. Like you said, that's why I waited to the last row to show you guys doing this. Cause if I'd have done this on the first row, it would have been probably twice as long and probably me throwing the stuff around a little bit more trying to go back and do something I forgot because like that scraper that you saw me put in the openers I'm forgetting to do those that was kind of frustrating I'm having to go through and take a you can put them back on with just one wheel on just by removing by removing one of the gauge wheels but it's annoying after you just went through and got everything set so once I go through and put this other wheel on what I'm going to be doing is adjusting the the gap or the width, the distance um, from the seed disc opener and the gauge wheel. Uh, basically, I want them where they're just hardly making contact, uh, not so much that the if you turn or spin the gauge wheel, it's spinning the seed disc. So, going through and adjusting all those, it's kind of kind of tedious and I'll show you another tell you another piece here it's kind of helping this is sped up because I'm running out of things to to comment on well, there's plenty of things I could comment on but it doesn't really have much to do with this video right so once again there's the it's actually the adjustment because that's that piece that I just put into the arm there um, you actually are able to adjust that in or out when the wheel is on and that adjusts your your distance from the seed disc um, once again there are actually some spacers on the back of the gauge wheel that go between the wheel and the arm so you're not rubbing on on the wheel otherwise if you lose those spacers like with the first one I did I um, got lucky and didn't realize you can see I'm adjusting that there I got lucky and saw that they were sitting next to my leg and had a light bulb moment and realized I needed them so going through, gonna run this down until it's tight and I back it off like just a little bit. And then I'm gonna remember on this one, see it's a little tight. Come on, Travis. I didn't see me tighten it, did you? Because there's the bolt that goes in the center of that wheel. You're supposed to tighten that down because I made the mistake. There you go. So you had to tighten it down. Because otherwise your adjustment is going to be off. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> so you tighten that down and then now once you make your adjustment you have to tighten it down and then spin it. Looks like it's spinning pretty good. This one, I don't know if the wheel was just, it had a little bit of dirt on it. Because here comes Ryan because he needs help. Um, it was spinning freely all the way around except for just a little bit of a part of it and it looks to me like it was it was just catching the seed disc so I was happy with it it's not gonna give us any issues as far as I'm concerned and I'm looking forward to planting I'm looking forward to making hay believe it or not um, we've had rain for the last week and I gotta tell you that's kinda mind-numbing after a while I mean I had well, I didn't work one day because I had Relina, and then the next day, uh, my eye was throbbing. I don't know if headache was radiating through my eye or what, but I lost a few hours there. And then we went and got that stock trailer, and we're doing a lot of a little bit of everything. The goal next week, I mean, that's why I'm trying to get some of this machine shed work done, is because uh, f we want to fix fence. Uh, we could do that in about a week, a little under a week. It depends on the conditions, but want to get it done because it's really once we get fences done we're doing this now um, then before you know it it's one thing after the other so looks like adjusting it just a little bit more 
making about a quarter to a half inch turn adjustments because it seems like you know, see that's why I'm checking because it's just like it wants to spin all but on one little part of it and it's not like it won't spin on around but I don't want it obstructing the seed disc opener and I must be happy with it because we're at the end of the video mm, Calvin being a good boy um, so this is the last one of that and that's picking them up making sure that they're making clearance too because when they're running they're actually they're not running down like they are they're gonna be elevated and I'm not too worried about it so well that's a I don't know if we're on really want to say that's a how-to video but that's a how I did it video right wrong or probably wrong but there you go uh, more planning work videos coming up that was probably the most strenuous part of it the rest of it's just regular old maintenance but until next time make sure you like comment and subscribe unfortunately I have to ask you to to keep supporting the channel otherwise we just fade into obscurity